Hi everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Many of you have asked that I take the easel software and design a project. And then from there, save that project as a G-code and then carve it out on another machine. Well, the machine I'm going to use today is the Fox Alien Vasto. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to be able to do. And you'll be able to compare that to another video I did with a similar project. So let's go ahead and get into the design phase. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my Patreons who help support this channel. Your support is invaluable. And if you would like to be able to participate and join the Patreon family, please go to patreon.com slash Workshop. Thank you so very much for all of my viewers and support of this channel. The project I'm going to do is to make these right angle clamps. They work fantastic in the shop and I actually need a couple more of them. The first time that I had carved these out, I actually did it on the Fox Alien 4040 XE. Well today, I'm going to use the Fox Alien Fasto to be able to carve out my new ones. This is a look at the original file that I had done and it worked absolutely fantastic. I love this design. What I want to do though is make a few modifications to this. This is set up on a board that is 10 by 10. The board that I have today actually is 9 by 9. So the first thing I want to do is just come down here and I'm going to click this little down arrow and I can duplicate the file. So now I have an exact copy over here. I want to make some changes. This is going to be a 9 by 9. So this is going to be 9 inches wide, 9 inches wide is still the half inch of the depth. So that is going to be fine. Now I'm going to highlight everything and I want to be able to center that to the material. So I can just come up to the edit menu, center through the material, and you can see how that just is now perfectly centered. The next thing that I want to change, I don't really want to take the time to cut these holes all the way through and just eliminate all of the waste. What I will do instead is just come over here and I want to come to the cuts menu and I'm going to cut this on the inside and the tabs though, I only need two. Let's change the quantity of the tabs to two and I'm going to switch highlight the tab, swing it around and put it right down into this location. This one I think will be fine leaving it right there. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. We'll come up to the cut, to the pocket, inside, two tabs. We'll slide that tab around to right there. We'll move this tab up a little bit more. And the way that I'm doing that, I just hover over it where you see the arrows, hold down the left mouse, and then I can slide it to whatever location that I want. And then from here, I'll do the same thing again. Now that moved just slightly, so I'm gonna unmove it. Same thing, it's on the cut menu. And I wanna be able to have this cut on the inside. And of course, two tabs again. Just slide that right there. That will keep it in position. The last one, same thing. And just like that, I have made the modification that I want to make. If I wanted to go without the tabs, I can click on this, hold down the shift, click on all four of these, and then come over here to the cut menu and go and click no tabs. And that will take care of all the tabs at one time. So that gives you the option and your choice on how you want to do it. 
Now I'm gonna use the glue and the tape method to be able to hold this down. So I am going to go with no tabs. Just as these squares will cut out, the tape will hold it in place just fine. I wanna come back down to the workpiece. I wanna highlight this again, and I wanna rename this. And I wanna rename this the right angle, and we're using a .125 and I'm also going to set this as the Vasto. And that way it clearly identifies which machine that I'm gonna cut this out on. So that takes care of renaming it. And it also identifies the size of the bit that I'm going to be using. To be able to save this G code is very, very simple. I come up here to the project tab and I click download the G code and that takes care of it and you can see the file showing up right down here at the bottom of the screen. So I can minimize that now. I have the open build software minimized. All I need to do is just open that up now and there's the file right there. And I can open that and that takes care of it. It puts it right into the open build software. And this picture right here shows exactly what's going to cut and how it's going to cut. And I can click on simulate and you can see where it starts right here. And then it's gonna move right up and be able to cut these out. And I can speed it up. By running the simulation, I can actually verify where the project is going to start. In this case, bottom left-hand corner. I can also see the visual picture and make sure it is in fact the right file and I can get an idea of exactly where it's going to run. And if there was any mistakes, I can catch it now. And we'll stop the simulation. When you open up the open builds, it's very similar to the other senders. The first thing you're gonna do, you'll have this alarm uh, bell flashing. You just click on that and that will unlock it. And from there, you can move around the machine with these controls right here. The first thing that I want to do is go ahead and home the machine. So I'm going to click on home. So smooth and so quiet. It is absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to be using the glue and tape method and the glue that I'm going to be using is the Starbond. Now this is the thick glue. You can just as easily use the medium or the thin, but this is what I'm going to use today. And then I'm gonna use the blue painter's tape and that's gonna hold it down just fine. Now I've also clamped down an auxiliary wasteboard so I won't damage the original wasteboard underneath. Now I'm positioning the tape so I can catch the various dropout pieces Normally I would use two and perhaps just three pieces of tape and that's all. But because of the number of dropout pieces that I have, I'm going to go ahead and use four pieces of tape. And that will ensure that I catch everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and put tape down here. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And that's gonna line up quite nicely with my tape there and the tape that I have. I do wanna make sure that my board is square to the table. Then I'll go ahead and put the glue down. Really doesn't take a lot of glue Actually, in this scenario, I'm using more glue than what I really need because these dropout pieces are actually small and there's quite a few of them. Sure. Then I'll take the accelerator. And again, this is by Starbond. And by the way, now I do have a discount code in the description below where you can save a significant saving on the Starbond glue. So I would suggest you check that out. But once you press this down in place, it's ready to go. It dries almost instantly. The collet that I had in here 
was the quarter inch. And that's one of the bits that I have used quite often with this machine. But I need to switch over to the eighth inch. Now I have these already set up. So it's just a matter of unscrewing this one and putting in the eighth inch. And that way this will accommodate the bit very nicely. So I will also put a link in the description below so that you can pick up these different collets of the different sizes. And I keep the quarter inch and the eighth inch on hand all the time because that's typically the only size bits that I use. But you can get them in other sizes as well. Now I have this ready to go. And one of the things I want to do just to go ahead and go through this motion again is I'm going to raise up my z-axis and I'm going to go through and home this again. So you can see the full operation. You can also tell that that is not going to move at all. Now I'm not changing the volume at all. You can actually see exactly just how quiet this machine operates. The homing cycle is now complete. I want to move this over now and set it up to the bottom left hand corner to be my X, Y, zero position, which is the work position. Now for this setup today, I'm going to go ahead and use the paper to be able to set the z-axis. All you need to do is slowly lower the bit until it touches the paper and the paper does not pull out. It will actually be held in place by the bit. And that's just now touching. So that will be the z-axis. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this over to my x, y, zero position. And that will be it. At this point, I'm going to come right over here and click this. Is that for zero and zero on all three of the axes? So now I'm actually ready to be able to run the job and do the uh, carving. If you wish, you can make the comparison between the diagram here and what the bit is actually doing. You can also see the exact coordinates with the numerical value. This is really a nice program. And back to the machine, you can see that it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I absolutely love this. And it's not difficult to do to take the easel software to the G-code to the machine. You can also see just how well the glue and the tape method works and it minimizes your cleanup and sanding that's required at the end. This is to me the best method to be able to secure your project is using the glue and the tape method. You also have controls here where if you wish to increase or decrease the feed rate you can do this just by the sliding of this bar. Another very nice feature of the open build sender. With just a little bit of effort, you can loosen these pieces and take them out. It's not necessary, but you can do that. And it does leave a very clean cut that's going to minimize the amount of sanding that will be required. And in case you were thinking about it, no, I'm not going to try to remove the large piece. It is going to be very well secured. It's almost finished at this point, and it's only taken about 25 minutes to complete this. Once it completes the operation, the bit will withdraw from the wood and return to the X, Y, zero home position. And of course, it will turn off the spindle. At this point, what I want to be able to do is just take the machine and move it out of the way. I want to be able to have free access to be able to get to the project and be able to remove it from the wasteboard. And the easiest way that I have found to be able to do that is just use a putty knife. You can just lift right underneath the edge and be able to break it loose from the glue and the tape. 
with the project now free from the waste board, you can see the end result. I think it's pretty amazing. Just a little bit of cleaning up with the sandpaper and these would be ready to go on the shelf for my next cabinet build. Now on these, very little sanding is actually necessary just to be able to take care of these edges. And that's literally all that's required. And just like that, it's looking great. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that this video actually helped and answered a lot of questions. Many people have asked, can I take a project in easel and go all the way through saving the G-code and actually carving it out? So this, I hope, answered a lot of those questions. And if you did like the video today, by all means, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, while you're there, hit the little subscribe button right down below and the notification bell next to it. That really does help me out an awful lot, more than you can imagine. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next project, because I've got a lot planned. So bye-bye for now.